and welcome to Frocks in the Box. Now, I'm Muriel Gray and this is Marie Helvin and one of us is probably the most beautiful woman in the world and a very famous international model and one of us is a bit of a dog. Now, can you spot <laughs> which is which, dear viewer? Well, after seven weeks of Frocks in the Box where we'll be educating you thoroughly about all aspects of fashion and beauty, you'll be able to spot which is which very easily. Now, everybody's saying, well, what is Marie Helvin going to wear on this show? So what are you wearing in this, this very special first show? Today I'm wearing um, a Rifat Osbeck, I'll show you, which is a really simple but very sexy, I think, dress. It is, it's very, it's sexy because Better. you're in it, though really isn't it? <laughs> no, it is. It's nice and it's classic <laughs> and you can, you know, add jewellery and make it look a little bit different because it is so simple. Mm. What about you? Ah, well, you see, now this is a bit of a problem because it's a bit embarrassing. I was asked what I was going to wear in the first show, not being a great fashion expert. I actually copied something I saw in Vogue, which I don't know if you can see, so I shall stand up to give you the full benefit. It's a very gorgeous outfit, but when I looked at the price, it was nearly £6,000, which I think Crap. is rather obscene. So I copied it with a second-hand jacket and a rather cheap little skirt and the looks effects, very nice no it doesn't you're fibbing it doesn't look nice it doesn't look <laughs> anything like that <laughs> I still look horrible and scabby but would you pay six thousand no. pounds for anything who's the designer uh, I don't know I can't remember I can't remember, but six. Now, it is obscene, That's isn't it? You can still be my pal then if you don't like that. But <laughs> on with the show, because this week we'll be seeing how Gabardine is not only for your old school Mac. And we'll be meeting Catherine Hamnett, the designer whose last catwalk show oozed sex from every pore. Oh, I wish I did. And a regular <laughs> roving fashion reporter, Stephanie Scoop Turner, will be visiting Sheffield to see just what a girl wears for that big night out. But first we're going to take a behind-the-scenes look at a girl who's developed, shall we say, a very distinctive style, which is just as well because she's been on public display quite a lot over the last few years. So just what is Koo Stark's secret in attracting rich and handsome admirers? Is it all down to the way she dresses? Well, Marie went along to find out. So what do you have in your wardrobe? Wow. Well, there's a lot of antique lace, which I love, and um, beadwork, some antique beaded work. Oh, and it's then, beautiful. Yeah, it's it's nice. funny, it's completely different from what I imagined you would have in your closet. What did you imagine? I don't know, something more, the kind of country girl, I don't know, because I always of think that. of you in jeans and very casual. Yeah, you're right, there they are. <laughs> Do you think of yourself as a romantic? I mean, because that's what the clothes kind of say to me. Well, I like this. Not romantic in the way of lots of bows and fluffiness, but romantic in the way of feeling good, nice textures. Wearing clothes is something that's very sensual. You have to have to make you feel good. They have to feel good on your body, and you have to move with them and sit with them and live with them. So romantic, I suppose. Feminine, it's maybe. It's sensual, is the yes. Word. Feminine, sensual. It's definitely something that I enjoy. Does that mean that you wear the sexy underwear under the clothes as well? The sensual, wow. sexy stuff. I wear cotton or silk. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> silk underwear, high heels, beautiful dresses. Koo obviously loves her clothes, but shopping for them is a different matter. I don't actually like going into the shops. Yeah. I do it under I great duress. Mean, do you get uh, hassled a lot? I mean, people obviously must recognize you, and it, does, it must make shopping kind of uncomfortable. Well, it's kind of embarrassing when yeah, you're queuing up at Marks and Spencers and people are going, oh, oh, are you? What are you buying what Marks you and Spencers? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ooh, tell us. <laughs> uh, I know, frozen yeah. chicken. Right? <laughs> Koo has a fabulous collection of beaded dresses, which she buys from designers like Sandra Rhodes or picks up in antique markets. Whose clothes don't all project a sweet, innocent image, there's one dress guaranteed to send the paparazzi reaching for their telephoto lenses. That is a fabulous dress, Koo. You like it? Ah, oh, that's the sexiest dress in your wardrobe. You it's think so? Fantastic. It's quite simple. It's um. How does it work? I don't really well, understand. I, These I zippers know. everywhere. I mean, the Monica is this young sort of. Lady, she's very clever mm -hmm. with cutting. When it when it hangs, you know, it's one of these dresses. You look at it on the hanger, and you think it's nothing, and it folds up and packs like a dream as well. But you get oh, it on. I think it's wonderful. One final question, Koo, for those intimate evenings with very special men. What would you wear, Marie? <laughs> I can't ask that. <laughs> 
Well, for heaven's sake, are you going to have a sued before the first programme's over? Oh, no, I'm not a pro yet, am I? <laughs> Well, those dresses, I mean, those beaded ones especially, I mean, were those terribly expensive, do you think? Well, they weren't expensive because uh, she actually goes out in search of them at, you know, antique markets. Oh, so you can pick up some good second-hand things. Mm. Oh, goodness me, I certainly know that. Now, as we said earlier, gabardine isn't only for school max. It's perfect for the in-between kind of clothes that you often find yourself rooting about for at this time of year. And this spring, you're going to find lots of gabardine in the shops. So we're going to show you one or two outfits which may or may not sum up the different ways that the fabric can be used. Joyce Grenville. Now with me in the studio is Glenda Bailey, who's editor of a fashion magazine about to hit the streets called Folio. Now first of all, Glenda, I mean, what is gabardine? I used to think it was material that came from Aberdeen, but what is it? Well, gabardine is a twill woven fabric, which means that the threads run diagonally across a cloth, as you can see. And does that make it very wearable or very sort of durable? Well, it makes it very durable and it also keeps its shape. Um, you can see from this example, this is cotton gabardine and, it, and it's from Henny's. It shows a new short skirt with the longer jacket. Now this one I would say was more traditional use of gabardine. What's this one exactly? Well this is from Reldan and as you can see it's got the 7 eighths jacket over the very short tight skirt. And I think this one looks particularly good. One of your favourites? Yes, definitely. Now this is, a, I know, a very expensive one. Now would gabardine in this form be very difficult to look after? I mean, how, how would you look after it? Well, I'd always recommend dry cleaning with wool gabardine, um, especially when you've got details like this. It show, this one particularly shows a new sarong shape and um, it really needs looking after. Is, is this a difficult thing to look after when you've got a lot of gabardine there in a big coat like that? No, not really, because this is polyester gabardine and um, Wallace obviously chose it because they've used pleats as a detail and with pleats you actually need um, a polyester to keep them in. And that's how these traffic policemen and people that ride horses <laughs> gave them. Is this the kind of thing that you would wear? Well, not that particular colour, but it does come in navy and um, I much prefer it in navy. You even pointed out my jacket was made of gabardine. I'm yes. horrified, I didn't even yes. know. And it, th I'm sure that you'll find that it will keep for a long time just because it's, um, it's well structured and it will keep its shape. And obviously with cotton gabardine then you can clean it, um, you can actually wash it as opposed to wool gabardine where of course it needs dark, dry cleaning. Well that's cheery news, thank you very much indeed Glenda. Now we're going to take a break but we will be back in a few minutes when Marie's going to make a spit with envy when she shows off a few of her favourite evening frocks. So see you then.
Welcome back. We're now going to take a look at one of my favorite designers, Catherine Hamnett. She's a well-known label on the international fashion circuit, and we went along to find out what makes her clothes so special. I think probably the secret of my success is the fact that I identify totally with the consumer. I mean, I design for myself. I'm not just a garment way of wearing things. And I think that, you know, what do I want? And I want to cheat, basically. I want to be able to get dressed in 45 seconds and look perfect. You know, I don't want to be a slave to my appearance. I want to put on clothes which I can forget about and also forget about my clothes and I don't want to fling them in the washing machine. Not, ha not have to iron them or worry about them at all. I think, though, we got away with it. I mean, I was clocking it up. I think we did five years on the crumpled look. Mother of two, Hamnet, felt she had a mission to liberate us all from the ironing board. Her clothes became functional, fun and easy to wear, and of course easy to copy. We got very well known for utility clothing and putting on functional pockets, but the copiers somehow lost sight of the function, just thought pockets were great anywhere, and covered everything with pockets which are revolting and naff. And so I felt it was the time to drop all that, and so we had a radical change of style and um, so we went for a very straight tailored look suddenly you know chic sleek soigné and um, put that out just complete and didn't close the body instead of baggy although very comfortable I think you get bored with anything in fashion like androgynous which is the round you know gets boring and you think how oh, a lot of girls look like girls you know boys look like boys and um, you do that because it's reaction I mean it's a pendulum you know I think it's wonderful for women to be able to dress up celebrate their bodies they're so beautiful and there's nothing like a woman's body you know Although Hamnet's moved from unisex to pure sex, some critics feel she's caught in a time warp. The same clothes, give or take a pocket or two, strut down the catwalk season after season. We all sit there waiting for a sort of mind-blowingly new thing, but uh, if you think of other designers, like, uh, you know, well-known designers like Kenzo or Saint Laurent, or, I mean, you know, even Bruce Holford, I mean, once you've actually got your style, the thing that people know you for, it isn't really very sensible to change it radically. What you do is develop it. I mean, she still makes a really brilliantly cut pair of trousers. I mean, okay, each season it's slightly different. Um, but she still, you know, one still wants that new pair of trousers. And she's right not to change too much, I think. Hamlet's never wavered either from her outspoken political beliefs. She created the famous slogan T-shirt and had the front to wear one to number 10. Thatcher's government have changed the way they count unemployment 17 times. Did you know that since they got into power? We read that in America. It's quite interesting. Nuclear power um, and nuclear arms, nuclear energy. And nuclear dumping. I mean, I just find it's, you know, my children are so threatened. bad. The pharmaceutical companies are not pooling their research on AIDS. It's a major nice, um, CND symbol, um, studded denim jacket. Um, you know, poor people in these revolting high rise flats that were designed for them. Someone you know, said to me the other day, why didn't I give up? Um, designing clothes and going to politics. I didn't actually take it as an insult. Um, but I think politicians and that whole structure is too frightening. I think I do fine the way that I am. You know, I mean, nobody would listen to me if my clothes weren't selling. And sell they do, to give a turnover in excess of four million pounds a year. And there are plenty of people only too happy to pay 65 pounds for this jacket or 55 for the skirt. I try to keep the clothes as cheap as possible because I think um, I try to keep them to be the minimum price that you can have for design and you know well no not for even design because I don't charge for design I forgot about that um, for you know quality and manufacture you know just like any straight industrial company and this is what they come out at. I feel it's expensive uh, inevitably because a sweatshirt you know you can't really feel that a sweatshirt should be perhaps £60, but um, she has an enormous amount of copyists and if you want to wear the real thing, I mean, any designer has to make themselves exclusive. I think it's as simple as that. I mean, she does stick to the quality of it and there are so many people who have ripped her off that if you want the real Hamlet, then you have to pay for it. 
Catherine Hamnet there. Now, every now and again, a girl has that big dilemma in her life. What to wear for the night out in the tiles? Now, you obviously want to look as if you've tried without <coughs> horror of horrors, looking as if you've tried too much. Now, Sheffield is renowned for its nightlife, so Stephanie went there to investigate. Well, in Sheffield, we like to dress up. Um, we work hard and we play hard and uh, we have lots of nightclubs in Sheffield and a great social life. The northern people, we like to enjoy ourselves. When Victoria Harris of Elizabeth Couture in Sheffield took me through a few of the frocks in her shop, I began to see what she meant. This has its own built-in bodice so that if you're not very well endowed, you see you don't need any undergarment. Mm -hmm. It's by Murray Arbeid, one of the leading designers in England, and it is rather expensive, but I'm sure you'll agree it's really rather superb. Yep, right, OK, then. Show me this one down here. Now, this is very good, very good value indeed. It is pure silk and has that sort of Grecian air about it, and the price is £195. Next. It is all Hilanka stretch, and it has the effect of a, a swim costume. It's, it's fabulous, it grips the figure. And then it has the overskirt in the, uh, in the tulle with all the beading on it. See-through here, so it's rather plungy and very plunge at the back. So you can't really wear a foundation garment anyway. No. And how much is that one? That one is 500 pounds. Now for a more formal occasion, Shirley Bassey, eat your Well, out. this is it, Shirley Bassey, yes. I think over a certain age, ladies should wear sleeves. Again, it's very, very sexy. Low back, very uh, tight and figure-hugging, and a gorgeous colour. Mm. It's £499, but it isn't actually hand-beaded. But it is on pure silk. No, if that was hand-beaded, it'd be about £2,000. So that's what you wear to the firm's dinner dance. But for those less formal occasions, like a night out at the disco, what is a young girl to do? Jim, tell me, do you have any kind of dress policy here? Yes, very strictness. Yeah, what's, what, what, what can you wear? Well, the ladies have to be nice like yourself. Jets have to have like, cardigans or jackets. We don't prefer ties, but nice jackets, nice cardigans. No jeans, no trainers, just yeah. smart. Josephine, home of Sheffield's nighttime glitterati. Apparently, on a good night, you can even spot the odd snooker star. Well, I've tarted myself up, so I reckon it's time to go and size up the local competition. Excuse me, Hello. did you buy that top just to come here? Yes. Um, is this the sort of normal thing that everyone wears? Do they dress up? Not normally. Um, some people dress up. I like to dress up all the time. I prefer it a more sophisticated look than a. Um, a dirty tatty look. Do you like sort of sequins and glamour and stuff yes, like that? Yes, I do. I like, I like the odd frill as well, you know, and the, the low-cut sort of dresses as well. What yeah. kind of things do you like wearing? Um, silky things, satin, you know, things with glitter on. So you like to look quite sparkly and Sparkling, yeah. catching. Get no. attention. <laughs> Typical club scene this, you know. All the girls are on the floor, well, I mean, not literally, and all the guys are hanging around the edge rehearsing their lines. Is there one kind of look that you aspire to, or one person that you think really looks great all the time? Um, I, I always like had a shoulder, so I suppose like the look of dynasty and things like that. Yeah, yeah that kind of look. Do you like dressing up when you go out to a club? Uh, sometimes. Do you like to look quite glamorous? It depends. On what? It just depends what mood I mean. So if you're really in an over-the-top mood, what would you wear? I'd wear some right posh then. It's quite, it's quite a lot of your wardrobe, sort of evening clothes. Most of it, yeah, because I'm in work clothes of sort of ordinary, boring work clothes, but yeah. going out clothes are different. Right, so then you suddenly put on this new That's persona. Right. Different image. Well, here in Sheffield, people really know how to let their hair down, not to mention their necklines, and blow the expense, because looking the business on a big night out is really worth it, and you get results. <laughs> well, there you go. That's just about the only perk of this job. Now, the people in that film obviously love to dress up and go out and feel glamorous, but, I mean, do you have to spend an awful lot of money to, to be glamorous? I don't think so. Not for... Especially if you're going to a nightclub, because, uh, I mean, they're always dark anyway, and you can really get away with wearing anything. Mm. But I think just women just like dressing up, especially at night. It's fun. What would you say is the most important thing to have, then, for an evening wear? Is it a, a nice little simple dress or Lipstick. jacket? 
Nice Nice (laughs) cake. Can anyone see it in the dark? Yeah, that's the only thing you could see. Really? I of that, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That doesn't cost an awful lot of lipstick. But we're still on the subject of evening wear. Marie very, very kindly agreed to model some of, uh, well, some rather interesting evening wear, shall we say. And we pre-recorded this because uh, we'd have needed a three and a half hour programme because she takes a bit <laughs> of time to get changed in between. This is a Belleville Sassoon. It's a kind of real dancing dress, don't you think? Yeah, it's like a flapper, yeah. isn't it? It's the wonderful to move in. Yeah. Look at that. You have to be quite dance slim to wear that, though, otherwise you bulge out in bits. So, Muriel? No. No. I'm bulging out of the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really stunning one. That's the sort that you would wear to a big posh, do I think. That is beautiful. That's Bruce Oldfield, and it looks very expensive. Oh, <laughs> it most certainly is very expensive. But you know, it's a couture item, that's why it's so the cost is high. You mean it's just a one off? A one off, exactly. You'd have to order it if you wanted that dress. Now, this is surprising because this is one of the cheapest, and yet you look absolutely brilliant. I in love that. this dress. This is by Pineapple. It's just simple, it's stylish. You can do so much with it. It's great. It's because the jewelry really helps, doesn't it? The shape of this is really gorgeous. Now, this is Emmanuel. Uh, do, do you feel that you're, you're very expensive when you're in it? <laughs> and the colour also. Well, they are dresses to make you do. Well, let's get on with a bit of news about what's happening in fashion this week. Good news for women of five foot three and under. Jaeger has brought out a collection specially designed for the shorter woman, the Cameo Collection. Yes, but the bad news is they don't take anything off the price because they've used less material. <laughs> and of course, there's this makeup, which is coming into the shops now. Now, neither Marie and I were awfully keen to try it out because, as you can see, the colours are what you might call unusual. Right. <laughs> so, poor old Stephanie, oh, I suppose I'd better do it if you want. She had a go. Now here's something new that deals with rather a delicate matter, how to keep uh, these up. Now this lady doesn't need much support, but this is a bust support. It's made of paper, comes in a pack of six, it costs three ninety five. It's waterproof if you wear it underneath a swimsuit, and of course it, it does that. If you're Samantha Fox, don't even bother trying, it's made of paper, not sheet metal. Well, we don't have that problem, Marie, do we? <laughs> no, we don't, but you know that's an old Hollywood trick. In fact, it's what we used to do for all those cosmopolitan covers. Really? Yeah, you do that. Oh, what a cheat! <laughs> well, that just about wraps it up for this week's show. It's a good pun. And if you'd like details on any of the clothes you've seen, then you can send for a fact sheet to Frocks in the Box, PO Box 123, Southampton, SO97HH. Or if you prefer, you can ring us on Southampton, and that's 0703 227744. And these details are also in the TV Times or on Oracle. Now, next week, we'll be seeing whether men really are becoming more clothes Conscious. Paula Yates tells me why she can't resist the frocks of top designer Jasper Conran. And Stephanie will be surviving a gruelling shopping trip, helping a size 18 girl find something, anything that fits. But until then, we shall see you. Bye-bye. Bye.